I just don't understand how Tango Gameworks can show up and just casually drop the game of the year like it's no big deal. The utter nerve to just reveal a trailer for an upcoming game and upcoming just ends up meaning hours after the trailer. Hi-Fi Rush is a rhythm action game and it comes from a studio whose previous works are The Evil Within, Evil Within too. and Ghost War Tokyo. You know, horror games, horror themed games, that kind of stuff. And their latest game is not exactly horror. And it is amazing. You play as Chai, who is a rock star. Future rock star. Who signs up for a project called Project Armstrong at Vanley Technologies. He undergoes some surgery to replace his arm with some cybernetic prosthetic, but an accident occurs during surgery where his MP3 player gets embedded into his chest. Because of this, he now feels the world to a more musical rhythm. He gets labeled a defect and sent to be game-ended, uninstalled from life. Chai fights back against a waves of Vanley robots with his weapon, this metal grabber used to collect trash. But this metal grabber has now magnetically collected scrap metal and has formed the shape of a guitar. There's a joke here about something being like an axe and a guitar and I don't know, it's on the tip of my tongue. The whole world sinks to music from Chai's animations to the background environments and even the UI. Each of these serve as a visual indication for the player as each attack from Chai and the enemies also land on the beat. Now you're not required to be in time with the attacks, though it does help. Each attack will land on the beat regardless of when you press the button, but there will be times when there's either a rhythm section or a small quick time event where you would have to hit the button in time with the music. This serves as the end of your combo and can help deal extra damage. You also get the ability to dodge and you very quickly gain the ability to parry attacks. Each would also be done on the beat. Chai has to travel through each level which consists of platforming and combat sections and you can go from one to the other rather quickly. The pacing is well handled as you're not going to stay in one section for too long. There are platforming sections that go into combat sections and each combat section would have maybe two waves, maybe three at most, so no part really overstays their welcome. The combat has a mild Devil May Cry feel to it, where you can launch enemies in the air as well as have combos to keep them juggled in the air. You can also unlock more combos and special moves to use in combat, with special moves using a resource called Reverb shown by this gauge up here. And as you progress through the story, you get to meet Peppermint, Macaron, and Cinnamon, two who can then be summoned to help with level exploration and progression. Peppermint can help break shields and barriers, and Macaron can break through armor that's impervious to your attacks. He can also break through walls that block your path during platforming. You're also able to use them in combat to juggle or damage enemies or even end a combo with them if you've unlocked that ability. We learn that Vandalay Technologies is working on a program called Spectra, which is a mind control program that will control anyone with an Armstrong prosthetic like Chai. To destroy this program, we need to get six passcodes from six Vandalay bosses. And each boss fight was as enjoyable as the last one. You start off with Rekka, who has a rather simple boss fight because you don't really have much mechanics to worry about, you don't have many things to juggle, and you don't have many abilities to worry about in the fight. So it's a simple fight of dodging attacks while dealing out damage. But then you come up to Zanzo, and his fight is rather different. You don't fight Zanzo per se, but rather have him spend more and more money so he gets defunded by Vandalay, and that will be his entire fight. You just defund this guy because he just spends more and more money. Looks like Zanzo's burning through his budget. Zanzo's immature creative vision prevents him from seeing the realities of the We can use this. No budget, our development pipeline comes to a full stop. Chai, goad him into throwing something lavish at you. Is this some sort of joke? Oh, now this is a juicy meeting. Do you want me to reschedule this? My personal favorite fight was Corsica's. Because Corsica's fight is not really an actual combat encounter, you just parry and dodge her attacks in time with the music which is a really good track as well. That helped boost that fight so much for me, but it was such a simple encounter that stood out so much. The game is also really stylish. I really love the art style they've gone for. It's bright and colorful and reminds me of pop art or comic books. 
The animation is so fluid and it ends up flowing really well. Keeping in time with the music must have actually been a real fucking challenge as Chai's feet hit the ground on the beat. When he's idle, he snaps his fingers to the beat. I don't know how they did it. I'm not in the game development industry, but honestly, this is really well done. I really love how they made this work. Now, if you've seen the trailer to this game, you might have picked up on something and maybe have had the revelation that this game is more comedic, it's more lighthearted. They want to be funny. And this might have some hesitation because, you know, when people try to be funny, it tends to fall a bit flat. High Fire Rush is a game that tries to be funny and ends up being really goddamn funny. It doesn't take itself too seriously, it sets that tone from the beginning where you just accept the jokes as they come and honestly each one gets better and better with some being rather obvious and some just being, oh we're really going with this bit, huh? Shall I take them in, sir? Yes, of course I want you to take them in. Why else would I bring you? Uh, can we have just one? Sorry, just take a second. You know that guy? Can we do this later? Sure, right, later. I think I know how we can escape. Really? Do you trust me? Are we actually giving them a moment, sir? There's a lot of dumb bits in this game, and that makes it great. It knows what tone it wants to give out, and it keeps hitting that mark. Speaking of dumb bits, I have to point out my favorite character, Cinnamon. The fact he has a dry erase marker on hand to draw his emotions on his face is such a good bit. I don't know how to describe it, but Cinnamon feels like he's a comic relief character in a game where every line ends up being a joke. All this really just to say that I love Cinnamon and I believe that Cinnamon is the real hero of Hi-Fi Rush. We stand a robot who draws his emotions. Mr. Jai! Now, if there's something I'm going to have to criticize the game on, and it's something that I could probably adjust for upcoming playthroughs, is that when you unlock more and more abilities, the game feels more hectic. You're trying to keep in time with fighting all these enemies, and there's like five to six enemies on screen, either being ranged or out of reach. You got multiple mechanics to worry about. Some might have impervious armor, so you need macaron to show up. Some might have a shield up, so you need to call a peppermint. Some might have fire, and god do I hate fire. Fire is such a bad mechanic for this, oh my god, fucking hell, can we just get rid of fire? But it just becomes too hard after a while to keep in time with everything. This didn't stop me from finishing the game or enjoying the game, but it's just something to keep in mind of because this just gets to feel like way too much when you want to parry attacks, when you want to keep in time, and trying to go for a high score. There is a UI element which you could have on screen, which is a visual representation of when the beat lands, so you have that directly in front of you rather than having to look off to the side or tap your foot to the beat constantly. And I could have this to help me out, and I probably will use that for upcoming playthroughs. But this is the only bit of criticism that I would have for this game. Rhythm games need to have a good soundtrack. The soundtrack needs to be on point. You can't have any track you want and even then the song in this case would need to be mixed for the calmer moments when you have nothing on screen and the more pulse pounding moments when you're fighting waves of enemies. You'll find yourself more often than not tapping your foot to the beat of each song as you make your way through the levels, bobbing your head back and forth as you swing your weapon, and there's even little guitar fills when you hit on the beat. The original soundtrack is nothing short of catchy. A lot of really good tracks are in this game. Really good original tracks and some really well picked licensed tracks as well. The licensed music, also really well chosen. The game does offer a streamer mode so people won't get DMCA'd while streaming this game. When you play with streamer mode on, the licensed tracks are removed and replaced with original music provided by the Glass Pyramids. As of right now, I haven't listened to music by the Glass Pyramids, but I would assume given the quality of the other tracks that their music also manages to stand up alongside the others. So let's talk about the lack of announcement for the game, or rather the sudden announcement. As I said, Tango Gameworks have mostly made horror games and this is very much not a horror game unless you have a fear of robots of any kind, in which case I'm sorry you couldn't really enjoy the masterpiece that is Blue Sky's robot. What a miserable existence you must live. Hope you feel better, King. But going back at it, this game was made alongside Ghostwire Tokyo back in 2018 in secret, 
and people would probably have had expectations of the game that would probably end up judging it too harshly. I mean, it would look a bit cheesy to have a horror studio make a more comedic game where the opening line is. Yep, that's me. And you're probably wondering how I ended up here. Now, I got the game on Steam because I'm more of a sucker for consumerism and bright colors. I'm like a child where you could dangle keys in front of them and they'd just be enamored by the whole thing for hours on end. But to others who repeatedly get high scores in Dr. Kawashima's brain age, who might just be absolutely ancient, big brain thinking, they might be a bit more taken aback by this. And honestly, I don't blame them because looking at this, coming alongside Ghost of Tokyo, you'd probably wonder, well, how is this gonna hold up? How is this gonna work? This one seems rather serious, while this one here doesn't seem as serious at all. It just seems like, like a little bit. So a sudden announcement would remove any notion of expectations, especially when you go, yeah, the game's available now if you want to play it. You don't have to wait, you don't have to think about it, you can just get the game. And the fact that the game was also available on Game Pass on release is just a thing to help people take that plunge, because if you have Game Pass, you can just get this game. So they expected this to spread by word of mouth as well. Honestly, this is a really good game. I believe this is a strong contender for Game of the Year, and one thing from this that I hope for is that Tango Gameworks ends up making games outside of the horror genre, they expand their reach, and they just go on to make more interesting concepts because rhythm action game sounds really cool, and this has been accomplished really well with Hi-Fi Rush. And it's a good thing that this video came out in such a timely fashion where I wouldn't be distracted by anything else. Nope. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Mr. Jai, I've had this screen.